I as I was mentioning we had uh, um, I was mentioning about estimating parameters you can have if you know the form of the density function, but if you do not know the values of the parameters then how do you estimate them. Well, there are very many distributions in the world and uh, here I will give example of only one distribution that is normal distribution. Normal distribution or Gaussian distribution, uh, I will tell you ways of estimating the parameters. Then the next question is what is the meaning of estimation? What is the meaning of estimation? there are several estimates, several types of estimates possible. There is something called unbiased estimate, there is something called maximum likelihood estimate, there is something called consistent estimate. Like this depending on the uses or depending on the type of the data, I mean one can have several types of estimates. Um, <coughs> since I am only going to talk about normal distribution, not about any other distribution. And uh, if you are got finitely many points from a normal distribution, be it univariate or multivariate normal distribution, then the mean of these finitely many points, it is unbiased estimate, consistent estimate and also maximum likelihood estimate of the population mean. I will repeat it and I will write on the board. If you have finitely many points from a normal distribution, the normal distribution can be univariate or multivariate, then the mean of these finitely many points is unbiased estimate, consistent estimate and maximum likelihood estimate of the population mean. These are n points coming from Gaussian distribution, independent and identically distributed. This is one terminology you are going to find at many places independent and identically distributed. Do you understand the meaning of this? Let me tell you the meaning. The meaning of one value being or one variable being independent of the another variable. You take a coin, you toss it once, you will get head. The same coin you toss it second time, you will get some other outcome. Do you think the first outcome has any role to play on the second outcome? The answer is no. So, the result of the first trial does not have any role to play on the result of the second trial then these two trials are independent. Whatever may be the outcomes of these two trials, they are independent. <coughs> now, the meaning of identically distributed, you are tossing the same coin, the probability of head of the coin has not changed, the probability of tail of the coin has not changed. So, the distribution has not changed. So, in the first trial and second trial you have the same distribution, but they are independent. So, then we say that these are independent and identically distributed random variables and why the word variable is used because you are going to get the value as h or t. If you are going to get a vector having some number of components then we would call it independent and identically distributed random vectors. Independent and identically distributed random vectors. So, let 
Now, let me write the statistical way of writing it. Let x 1, x 2, x n be independent and identically distributed random vectors following normal distribution with mean mu and variance covariance matrix sigma, where mu and sigma are unknown. <coughs> you might be having a question, the question is I wrote here random vectors usually we get the observations, usually we get for one data set you let us just say you have got 10 vectors, usually we get let us just say each one of them is 4 dimensional vector. So, you will get 10 such 4 dimensional vectors, okay. but then here it is written random vectors. You see those vectors that you have got they are taken to be realizations of these 10 random vectors. If you have got 10 vectors in your data set, then the small n value is 10 and those vectors are taken to be realizations of these 10 vectors. I will tell you once again with an example. Say I have tossed a coin, my first toss is resulting in head, say second toss is also resulting in head this is one realization of that means, my x 1 value is h here, x 2 value is also h, but note that my x 1 value could have been t, my x 2 value could have been t. So, this x 1 x 2 pair I might have got h h h t t h t t any one of the four pairs they are possible, but then in that instant I have got x 1 as h x 2 as also h. So, they are realizations of the vectors, but then all possible values of x 1 they can be many, all possible values of x 2 can be many. I hope you have understood the subtle difference. I hope you have understood the subtle difference between what a variable is and the data points that you have got. So, independent and identically distributed random vectors following this, but mu and sigma are unknown, but we have these are following this. So, we have some realization of this. Then how do you estimate this mean mu and variance covariance matrix sigma on the basis of this. Then, so the answer is you write x bar this bar is denoting the mean, this bar is denoting the vector. One over n summation i is equal to one to n x i. You take the mean of these n vectors. So, in one realization you will get one mean, in another realization of these n vectors you might get another mean, are you understanding? That is why this is also a variable, in one realization you may get one mean, in another realization of these n vectors you may get another mean. So, this is also a variable. Then. this is the statement that I made unbiased u n consistent and maximum likelihood.
estimate of mu. Do you think I am getting better? No, no, the there are n trials. There are n trials. Small n trials. Small n trials. So, in one set of n trials, you will get one, one set of values. In another set of n trials, you will get another set of n values. So, so that is why this is a variable. this is a variable. Then uh, you might, then your natural question is what is the meaning of unbiased estimate, what is the meaning of consistent estimate and what is the meaning of maximum likelihood estimate. I think that I will not go into it, I will not go into it. then I have to go deep into statistics which is not my aim. Okay. I just want to state the results. So, about mean there is actually no confusion in the sense that you just take the sample mean and observations you just take the mean and that is a good estimate of population mean whatever may be the mean. But about variance you have small problem which was what I was in my one of the previous classes I was mentioning. <coughs> um, okay. So, this is about mean now about the covariance matrix, uh, let me write this vector x i as let me write this vector x i as x i 1, x i 2, x i n i is equal to. So, so, can we just change oh, it? So. Right. Then maybe I can take this thing as Gaussian G A U G A U Gaussian distribution G A U S S Gaussian distribution with mean mu and variance covariance matrix sigma. In general I am using capital N for the number of features capital N for the number of features. So, so there are capital N number of features that means, you are in capital N dimensional space and your number of points is small n, number of points is small n. So, this ith vector I am writing it as x i 1, x i 2, x i capital N. <coughs> now, this covariance matrix sigma will be this is covariance of what this will be the covariance of here you have basically you have one vector x which is occurring which has the same distribution you have one vector x which has same distribution throughout. So, it is giving rise to the first one x 1, the second one x 2, the third one x 3 and so on and so forth. So, you are trying to find out covariance between the ith component of this vector and the jth component of this vector. Like that you are going to find the covariance between the covariance matrix will be a capital N by capital N matrix. Since, you have capital N number of variables, your covariance matrix will be a capital N by capital N matrix. So, if your covariance matrix is capital N by capital N matrix, then <coughs> you are basically going to have covariance between the jth component and kth component you might be wondering what this j is and what this k is j is 
1 to n k is 1 to n and this j and k are your original vector is x you have x 1 to x n and the ith realization x i it is basically here it is x 1 i here it is x n i this is your x i this x i is same as these x i's this this x i is same as this this x i x 1 if you write i is equal to 1 here you will get x 1 1 to x n 1 i is equal to 2 x 1 2 to x n 2 and i is equal to small n x 1 small n x capital n small n and you will find the covariance between the jth and the kth component of the original vector x of the original vector x the jth and kth component of the original vector x which I am representing it as x j x k and uh, your covariance matrix will be covariance x 1 x 1 covariance x 1 x 2 and covariance x 1 x n and this is covariance x n comma x 1 covariance x n comma x 2 and this is covariance x n comma x n which is nothing but the variance. This is the population variance covariance matrix which is not known to us. This is what we would like to estimate. What we have got are these things. What we have got and what we have, we have these things. Now, from these we would like to estimate this. Now, how does one estimate it? Here again you have consistent maximum likelihood and unbiased estimates. Now, there is a small difference here between unbiased and maximum likelihood estimate. The unbiased estimate of the covariance matrix I mean covariance between ith and jth, jth and kth component, covariance between jth and kth component, the estimate is represented by a hat, okay. this is equal to 1 by n minus 1 summation i is equal to 1 to small n. J, J is coming here. Where this is unbiased estimate this is unbiased estimate these are the means of the small n observations for each feature unfortunately this is also a variable for different sets of realizations you might get different means. So, these are all variables. So, I had to write represent them in capital letters. So, for the jth variable I have taken the jth sample mean, for the kth variable I have taken the kth sample mean and I wrote here n minus 1 this is unbiased estimate. Whereas, if I write here small n it is going to be maximum likelihood estimate, which was what I was telling you in my one of the previous classes.
if I write there small n, it will be maximum likelihood estimate MLE. That is the MLE is the standard form, maximum likelihood estimate MLE. This is how you estimate that again small n minus 1 by small n minus 1 is unbiased estimate. If I write there 1 by n, it is going to be maximum likelihood estimate MLE. Now, in my previous class, one of the previous classes I was mentioning these two things without giving the proper mathematics. Here, this is the proper mathematics. I could have written here C O V x j x k, there is a hat, this is 1 by n summation i is equal to 1 to n x j i minus x j bar into then this is M L E. For a very large n, whether you write n or n minus 1, it does not matter. And I also mentioned in that class that statisticians would like to take 1 by n minus 1, not 1 by n. And uh, I also mentioned that I was telling you about 1 by n, because that is what generally people have learnt in their childhood. When you learn mean and variance, you write there 1 by small n, not 1 by n minus 1. Anyway, since I have done this thing, from now onwards I would expect you to write 1 by n minus 1, not 1 by n. Do you know the meaning of unbiased estimate? The meaning of unbiased estimate is this. Um, just one minute, please. Yeah. So, I will tell you the definition of unbiased estimate. Suppose T is a function of the sample observations and you would like to estimate theta. Then T is said to be unbiased for theta, if expected value of T is actually theta. Expected value of T is actually theta. Now, what is the meaning of expected value of T? You are going to find the mean of this T. Expectation means the mean. That means, integral T, capital T is taking the value small t with its density function. Suppose, the density I represented by f t and suppose it is ranging over minus infinity plus infinity. A set of observations or a, a set of a function of the sample observations, t is a function of the sample observations, theta is the parameter that is to be estimated then t is said to be an unbiased estimator of theta, if expected value of t is equal to theta. The expected value of t means, you are finding the mean of t, you are finding the mean of t. If that is theta, then you say that t is an unbiased estimate of theta. Now, I said that the sample mean, if you have say, forget about uh, multiple dimension, let us just say we are in single dimension x 1, x 2, x n this mean x bar which is 1 over n summation x i. This is a this is an unbiased estimate of the population mean mu, population mean mu there is no bar. What is the meaning of this? You take all the realizations of this thing x 1 this is realization of the first random variable capital X 1, X n it is a realization of the nth random variable capital X n, which are independent and identically distributed, which are independent and identically distributed. So, you will get many values of this x bar, you will get many values of this x bar, in one realization you will get one x bar, in another realization you will get another x bar 
and you will take the average of all these realizations that is actually mean new. I hope you have understood the basic feeling of unbiased estimate. If it is not this, if it is something else that means, our estimator is not able to estimate this thing properly. A statistician would generally like to have would necessarily like to have unbiased estimates, because if it is not unbiased then there is a bias. You are not able to you are going shifting away from mean, you are shifting away from mean there is a bias which a statistician generally does not like. That is why statisticians prefer unbiased estimates. I hope I have answered your question. Maximum likelihood estimate is different. Maximum likelihood estimate the intuition is if you have got this set of observations which particular value of theta will provide with maximum probability this set of observations. I am repeating which particular value of the parameter theta will provide you these endpoints. Maximum likelihood that is why the word thing maximum likelihood. So, that is maximum likelihood estimate and unbiased estimate I have already told you. Consistent estimate means as the number of points goes to infinity this function that you have taken is it actually going to the actual value that is consistent estimate. As the number of points goes to infinity this function that you have taken it should if it goes to the actual value then that is consistent. Unbiased means on an average you should get this theta. Maximum likelihood means which particular value of theta will provide will give maximum probability for this sample or maximum likelihood for this sample that is maximum likelihood estimate. It is not necessarily true that all these three things should be same and in the case of variance and covariance they are not same. Any other question? I think we will stop it for today.